We have a lot to cover in today's video, including a potential trade for the offseason. We're going to take a look at about Trevor Zegers and the Montreal Canadiens. What might a trade offer for Montreal look like to land a young superstar out of Anaheim? Plus, Marty St. Louis rejoin the Habs. We'll discuss that situation as well. We have the Coyotes recalling Shane Doan's son. He's going to be making history in the desert. The Leafs' Matt Murray might actually be able to be medically cleared soon. We'll discuss how that might work, as well as Elias Lindholm is battling a pretty big injury. The Jagger bobbleheads have been found, and the Blackhawks are facing another lawsuit. A lot more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we got a lot of news to cover here today in a trade scenario for the offseason involving the Hams and the Ducks, which we're going to take a look at here a little bit later on. But first, we have a bunch of news stories, and we'll start one with one that does involve the Montreal Canadiens. Of course, we know that head coach Marty St. Louis had recently taken an indefinite leave from the team. Uh, we knew it was personal, family related, but we really didn't know much, um, except there was, I think it was a minor slip. I think it was David Savard during an interview uh, pregame. Game, uh, when it first happened saying that he was hoping that they would win for his son so it, it was related to marty's son uh, apparently he did have a hockey related injury and there were some complications of some sort and um anyways it was uh, i don't know the full extent of the injury i just know that it was obviously serious enough that he um had to leave the team to go be with him and, and be with his family so nice to hear that things are progressing in a good direction on that front I believe i think they said that uh, his son is at the family home in connecticut now which is where they're mainly based out of now and uh, everything seems to be going in the right direction so marty's going to be rejoining the montreal canadians here and we'll be back behind the bench so that's certainly great news to hear as i mentioned as well we're going to be seeing some history tomorrow night uh, with the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, now, the Coyotes have been getting a lot of attention in the media for a lot of the, the wrong reasons, including potentially you know, uh, being relocated or the whole arena situation, which seems to dominate the Coyotes' news cycle here and probably will until that's all sorted out. But for right now, they've recalled Josh Doan. Josh Doan, of course, was one of their draft picks from a few years back. I believe it was 2021. Uh, it's the son of Shane Doan. Uh, he will be the first Arizona player who has been born and raised in the state to uh, to wear the Coyotes uniform and participate in a regular season game. He's going to be wearing number 91, I guess, uh, and he will make his debut in their game tomorrow evening. Of course, he's played all of his hockey in the Arizona uh, area, of course, so that's also, I believe, going to be a first. Uh, he's the first uh, to do his uh, college hockey at Arizona State uh, with the Sun Devils. He's also participated with the uh, the AHL team the, the, in Tucson. And then, of course, now the uh, the main club in the NHL here, the Arizona Coyotes. So Josh Doan, of course, the chip off the old block of his dad, Shane. So certainly you know, curious to see how he's going to compare. Um, obviously, Shane Doan is going to be in attendance to take in this game here as well. Even though Doan now works for the Maple Leafs, uh, certainly has a long history with the Coyotes organization. And I know the fans are quite excited to see what he can do. So uh, certainly uh, nice to see the opportunity finally come and history be made down in the desert. Uh, the Canucks today confirmed that one of their top prospects, Jonathan LeCaramacki, Swedish player, has been uh, reassigned. So he'll be coming over and now his uh, season's complete in the SHL and he's going to be assigned to the American Hockey League in Abbotsford. Uh, he will be staying for a while, but eventually we'll head back to Sweden later on to uh, to take part in tryouts for the, uh, the World Championship team that will compete at the Worlds in May. So obviously, you know, getting him to Abbotsford will be good. And I suspect that's likely where he'll play next year. Uh, we have a bunch of other signings and uh, roster moves around the NHL here. Uh, the Dallas Stars today confirmed that they are signing uh, Hobie Baker candidate goaltender uh, Ben Krause out of St. Lawrence University. Uh, he's an older prospect who completed his full four years of college and he's going to be getting a one-year uh, rookie contract. So we'll see how uh, Ben Krause can do with that. I mean, he did have a, a good run in college, so we'll see what he can do in the pros. Uh, the Panthers today confirmed their they're signing Ben Steves. Uh, he gets a two-year entry-level contract. Of course, he played his uh, college hockey at the University of Minnesota Duluth. Uh, the Seattle Kraken today also confirmed they're recalling uh, young forwards Ryan Winterton and Logan Morrison. 
Uh, Vegas, of course, yesterday we found out that they had to recall a goaltender in Yuri Patera uh, due to the injury to Aiden Hill. Uh, to do that, we did confirm today uh, that uh, they had to move Tomas Hurdle to long-term injury reserve to create the necessary space to make that recall possible. Uh, so Hurdle's now moved to LTIR, but he's been out long enough that there's no issues there. He'll be activated when he's able to resume no no problems and not front it'll have to make sure they have ample space which they can certainly do so by uh you know certainly moving a few things around uh the red wings today have announced that uh young prospect jonathan bergeron has been reassigned back down to the american hockey league uh he's been one game away from needing waivers again uh, and he's been uh, i believe inactive for the last like week to 10 days or so so he gets uh sent back down uh, before he would need waivers to go down. And the uh, the Colorado Avalanche as well today, based on comments made from general manager uh, Chris McFarland, it sounds like goaltender Pavel Francouz, who we know is uh, out for the year, uh, may retire. It doesn't sound like he's getting ready to ramp things back up and make a comeback or get ready for next season or anything of that nature. Uh, we may have seen the end of Francouz in the NHL, and uh, he may not play overseas either. We don't know. It sounds like retirement might be in his future, but that is not yet confirmed. Speaking of injuries, a couple other big updates, including Elias Lindholm in Vancouver. Uh, Elliot Friedman and Jeff Merrick talked about this on the 32 Thoughts podcast this morning, and Elliot also made comments on, on the segment of Saturday Headlines on Hockey Night in Canada on Saturday night, talking about how Elias Lindholm, even though he's currently been playing with the Canucks uh, and recently got a, a goal, which ended a bit of a goal of slump for him, uh, that he is playing through an injury of some sort, and it sounds like the Canucks are kind of being careful and evaluating things things um it sounds like they're trying to determine if he can continue to play through this or there it sounds like there is a possibility he could end up being shut down but i think they're kind of weighing up the options that if the uh you know to, to recover fully and to correct the issue if surgery is required what kind of recovery time i think they're getting opinions on that right now and it just sounds like uh you know the they need to determine if he can get through this or not uh it would be a big blow if he was uh, going to be out for an extended time and couldn't compete in the playoffs or something because obviously he was a big acquisition to add to their playoff push. And he was also, you know, somebody they gave up a lot of assets to get. Uh, and then on top of that, of course, it's not good for him either. He's a pending unrestricted free agent. Wasn't having the greatest year in Calgary. Comes to Vancouver. Things have been slower with his production after uh, a pretty good start in the first few games. And, you know, obviously from his standpoint, to get a better contract the next year, it'd be his own benefit if he can not only play in the playoffs, but perform at a higher level. Um, so we'll have to see. I don't know, but there's certainly a question mark facing Lindholm in the Canucks right now, which could impact things for the rest of the regular season or possibly the playoffs. So we'll have to wait and see how everything works out on that front. The other big injury update came from Elliot Freeman on Leafs goaltender Matt Murray. I wasn't sure we'd hear much about Murray before um, you know the end of the regular season, but it sounds like, according to Friedman, based on uh, comments from Murray himself, that he could be possibly be medically cleared either in early April or maybe by mid-April. Now, that's not a guarantee just yet, but it sounds like that's the you know optimistic hope right now. Uh, obviously, he's been out for an extended time, not playing this year after having. Uh, hip surgery uh, at the beginning of around well in the off season near like later in the summer so ultimately um, you know it's hard to say how this is going to go but you would think considering the amount of missed time that he would likely go to the American Hockey League on a uh, on a play on like a playing stint so we'll have to see where that goes I would suspect depending on the time frame I would I don't think the Leafs can really figure out a way to activate him on a regular season with the, the cap the way it is, uh, I don't think they can figure that out. Barring some kind of other long-term injury that pops up between now and then, which I'm sure they would prefer doesn't happen, um, I don't know that we're going to see Matt Murray in the NHL during the regular season, but it could pop up in the American Hockey League to at least get some conditioning time in, and we'll see. So at the very least, he could be an available option to them in the playoffs. Now at this rate, though, um, I know Leafs goaltending does have some question marks around it, but certainly between Samsonov and Joseph Wall and Marty Jones, you know, at this rate, he's be like a number four option, depending on how far they go in the playoffs. 
They may not ever get to a point that they need that. At least I'm sure they would probably hope they didn't. I'm not sure who's going to be the starting goalie come game one of the playoffs here just yet. That's a little bit difficult to figure out. Um, But regardless of which way they go, Murray could be an option. I just don't know that there's really going to be a scenario where they need him. Once they get to the playoffs, though, if they do need him or they want to use him, they can get him in there. But I can't see a scenario popping up where they get him in there unless there's multiple injuries to those other three or you know, one guy that's left's not playing well or something like that. It would have to be a catastrophic situation, I would think, right? But it's in his benefit if he can get playing time, even if it is just American Hockey League time, before the end of the year because his contract is expiring. So if he wants to continue his career and get uh, a contract next year, that's going to be challenging given the fact that he – didn't play this year so we'll have to see where everything goes but uh, matt murray might be ready to come back a little sooner than some of us thought now of course not that long ago we talked about the pittsburgh penguins honoring yammer jagger of course we had a jersey retirement and not long after they were having a jagger bobblehead night but unfortunately those plans had to be postponed because the jagger bobbleheads were stolen and they were missing and they didn't get their shipment so they could not go ahead with the jagger bobblehead night and all those fans that had bought tickets and were supposed to get bobbleheads that night were told they could be get their their bobbleheads at a a later date once those could be recovered or if they had to do a new batch or what have you well it turns out they have been recovered which is quite good news for them uh, apparently there's uh well, i guess what you call special cargo recovery uh team negotiated the return of these uh bobbleheads or what they called stolen property which is what they were uh which was in california um and uh, they're hoping to distribute them on april the 6th so they are en route now to their rightful owners so the jagger bobbleheads have been found considering they were found in california i think everybody can kind of you know, leave Gritty alone. Gritty was the obvious one to point the finger at, being the Flyers mascot up to no good. But it turns out it wasn't Gritty after all. Now, from that uh, less serious topic onto one that's way more serious, uh, there was a big news update today regarding the Chicago Blackhawks. Now, of course, we recall um, not that long ago and something we're going to remember for a long time, I'm sure, the Blackhawks and the whole Kyle Beach, um, you know, uh, assault um situation that occurred and of course the blackhawks find um found themselves you know with a big fine and obviously reputation ruined and it was was quite a scenario of of everything that we learned about what went down with that team uh back when they were winning a stanley cup well there's another lawsuit against them from the exact same time frame the exact same scenario u.s federal court today denied the blackhawks when they requested the case be dismissed uh, obviously, uh, you know it's a negligent it's a negligent suit. It's what's been filed at this point by a second John Doe. So this is John Doe two, uh, who also alleges uh, that he was also sexually assaulted by the same coach Brad Aldrich, um, lawyer for John Doe number two. Of course, their identity has been protected through this whole process, just like Beach was until he decided to become public and make himself known. Uh, he the lawyer has confirmed that uh, they do have plans to subpoena Kyle Beach at the trial. Um, so he would testify on behalf of the, uh, of the other victim. So clearly, I would suspect that at this rate, it, it doesn't look good. I mean, clearly, if Kyle Beach is involved and we know everything went down, could we see, I'm not sure if there's possible, we could see a, you know, an out-of-court settlement like we saw in the other situation because of the justice system the way it is in the states just like we see here in canada uh there is a backlog and it's unlikely that this would go to trial for at least 18 months maybe closer to two years probably sometime in 2026 which is kind of crazy i know just like the whole scenario with the 2018 rule junior players that are facing sexual assault allegations is likely going to be you know an extended time they said probably late 2025 before that goes to trial um there's a long long stretch here for things to be kind of in limbo while uh, they wait to be tried and uh, the victims wait to get their justice etc but um, i wonder how the nhl will react to this i know there's already been an investigation based on all the claims made from beach um so it's i think a huge surprise here that there's other 
John Doe's in the mix, but certainly, uh, you know, hope this victim gets some justice as well. Now, as I mentioned, uh, the other uh, trade rumor I want to take a look at, we, we know Trevor Zegers' name has been out there for some time, dating back uh, a couple months now. Uh, and even to some degree in the offseason, it was even brought up because of the contentious negotiations his uh, he and his team of agents had with Pat Verbeek and the, and the Anaheim Ducks. It seemed like they had a really difficult time coming to terms on a contract. Um, I know Verbeek has made comments that they certainly want to keep Zegers in the mix. I know they, they, he was asked before about the you know rumors and speculation that he could be on the move. And he said what I would expect him to say, that you know they really like the player and he's a duck and they intend to want to work for them and keep him and blah, 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 blah. However, his name continues to surface out there in the rumor mill. And when you hear these types of things, a lot of the times, what usually happens is it means that there's other teams inquiring or there are conversations that are taking place and other people, not necessarily the ducks are, you know, talking to insiders or other people within the industry and kind of let them know, you know, where things maybe stand or what they've heard or what they've talked about. And essentially Zegers's name is still out there. It's still, the, some belief that there's a decent chance, not a given, that he could be moved this offseason. And what better time to do that than around the NHL draft if indeed it was going to take place. Uh, now, the uh, media from TVA Sports, which like I said, on the Montreal media on this side of things, uh, would be talking about what they believe would be an offer from the Montreal Canadiens for Kent Hughes to bring Trevor Zegers to the Montreal Canadiens. Now, once again, the main player in this rumor is Arbor Jack Eye. We talked about Jack Eye very recently in the last couple of days on the channel because his name has also been mentioned and linked that the, the Canadians, we know they want to bring in a top young player. And there's uh, you know a few that are more prominently named in the rumor mill of people that could be on the move and that the Hams might be considering trying to make a, a trade for. We talked about the Devils having interest where Alexander Holtz might be a target. And again, that Jack Eye would be part of the request going the other way. Well, his name has once again come up here and the TVS sports media is suggesting that to bring Zegers to Montreal, it's going to take a, uh, a young defenseman like an Arbor Jack Eye and a first round pick, uh, a top five protected first round pick. Now I'm, I'm thinking at that rate, you know, does Montreal try to include the 2025 draft choice? I don't know. I think they would, to be honest, I think they'd be better off to offer 2026 or 2025. Sorry, not 2026. Like obviously we're 2024 getting ahead of myself here, but like the, the, the to offer next year's pick and make sure it's protected, like top five, top seven, something to that effect. Obviously, if it's going to be a top five pick, you want to take the player as much as you like Zegras, but if you're picking top five, you really would prefer to keep that. Um, and obviously we know this year it is possible they could pick top five. Depends on how things go with the draft lottery and how the season finishes up here, but they could end up being a little bit lower. They could be, you know, six, seven, eight. It's really hard to say, right? Um, but would you trade a first round pick in Arbor Jack Eye for Trevor Zegras? I mean, Jack Eye is a unique type of defenseman, and as much as the, the Ducks have accumulated a, a good a group of young D there, and they could have one of the better D cores down the road as well. Jack Eye is a different kind of defenseman that they don't have. Um, they they seem to be, um, you know, the group that they have are more, uh, you know, smaller skilled defensemen where, you know, Jack Eye, like I said, there's not a lot of guys like him. And I can understand why his name is in the rumor mill a lot because we know that the Montreal Canadiens have a lot of young defensemen. They can't keep them all. They're not all going to be abs long term. He's obviously a huge guy. He's got a big size. Now we know he's not afraid to fight. And he's just a unique kind of player. So it's not a shock that teams would show interest in this, right? Especially down the road as you get into the playoffs, you're going to want a guy like him. So for that reason, I think it's quite possible. Montreal certainly is not out to trade him. But if they do have to include him in a deal that brings them a real high-end piece, would they do it? I think they have to at least consider it. I don't know that he's a unique, special enough player that he can be completely hands-off for a real high-end talent like a Zegers or something comparable. Um, you know, obviously a first-round pick's a big deal too, so you want to make sure that, you know, as the Hams continue to build here, that they're going to eventually, you know, have to probably do a few trades to bring in some more players. Like a lot of the players they that they have now, 
that are a little bit more prominent on the team have been brought in by trade. Uh, they have a lot of prospects they've drafted, and it's going to be a mixture going forward to take this team up a level so they can be more competitive and start coming out of this rebuild here as they've accumulated you know, a lot of assets here. So they're going to be not too far away from a point where they have uh, they can start moving more to assets to bring in players that will help now move the needle now and get them more competitive now, maybe move towards a playoff spot now and not a few more years down the road. So for the Ducks, I'm not 100% they do that deal. They might ask for a little bit bigger of a package, but if you're Montreal, would you include Jack Eye in her top five protect a first round pick? For Trevor Zegers, let me know your thoughts on that down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with the latest news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.